join me. My name is Emma and I am a knitter, amateur sewer, occasional embroiderer and cross stitcher and pretty poor crocheter. Um, I am also the dyer behind Yarnworthy. Um, you can find my hand dyed yarn at www.yarnworthy.co.uk and you can find me generally over on social media. I'm most active on Instagram where you can find me as at Yarnworthy Yarn. Um, today is Thursday the 10th of December and it is a really dreary day here in Shropshire in the UK. Um, I am back after an unintended pretty long break since the last time that I recorded which I think has got to be probably at least eight weeks ago or something like that now. Um, at the beginning I very much fell down an advent calendar shaped hole and then when I clambered back up from there, I did actually record a podcast about three weeks ago now. Yeah, just coming up to three weeks ago. And I only realised when I came to edit it that I'd filmed the entire thing in portrait. Too used to doing bits for Instagram. So yeah, so back to scratch. But as it is, it does mean I've got quite a lot to share um, today. Um, I don't think I've mentioned over on here before, but we were in the process of selling our house. So... Um, that's really impacted on me doing anything sewing wise. So spoiler up front, there is absolutely no sewing content in this video at all. Um, just because I haven't got sort of like a permanent setup where I can leave the sewing machine and or the overlocker out. So it just felt like a faff to put them out and then have to put everything away and tidy up each time, each time I came to do anything. But as it is, we have actually, um, now agree to sale, fingers crossed, everything goes through okay. Everything is very protracted and long-winded um, here in the UK at the moment. So we will see, but yeah, hopefully things will pick up on that side soon. But um, in the meantime, Advent calendar has all got done. They all went out. I am so, so happy with them. We are, well, obviously we're 10 days in <laughs> with it being the 10th of December. Um, I've been working up my yarn as I go. Did have a brief pause to uh, work up a sample of some new yarn that I dyed and also um, to do a quick test knit which I will share with you shortly um, but yes that has been a lot of fun um, yeah I hope that you've all been keeping well since we last um, sort of had a chat on here the UK has I think been in and out of national lockdown we're now back on to um, sort of tiered lockdown systems so the area that I'm in at the moment is on high um, which is effectively like the middle of the three tiers that they've got at the moment so it's pretty much the same really you can't you know sort of can't mix with other people indoors and so on so yep so it continues and fingers crossed that things are moving in the right direction and we have more exciting positive things to look forward to in the new year so without further ado because I do have quite a lot to get through um yeah I will think I will get going with the um things that I have been working on so the last time that I recorded a video I had started the um slip extravaganza actually there we go we can work out how long ago it was now so it was a good like six to eight weeks ago I think I'm pretty sure that I had done clue one with the bonus um, which I did complete all of my clues as it went through um, the month of October and I did sort of finish each one before the next one. So this has been done for quite a while and it's, it's looking really good actually considering that I've, I think I've worn it every day for the school run since and just generally every time that I leave the building I absolutely love it. So the Slip Stravaganza is the mystery knit along that Stephen West hosts um, every October and you effectively get a clue is like part of the pattern um each week every friday sort of through the month of october um without knowing what the finished shawl is going to end up looking like so this is what mine looks like it is gigantic um aside from the fact that i'm really pleased with how this turned out i'm really pleased it was the mystery shawl because I think if I'd have seen it, I love the finished product, but seeing how many stitches you ended up with at the end would have totally put me off. Um, I would much rather work like 100 rows of 10 stitches than work 900 stitches over even like four rows. So yeah, but once I'm on my way with something and I can see the end line, that's different. So yeah, I'm really pleased with this. So for my slip extravaganza, I used... Um, my hand dyed yarn in the 100% British BFL fingering weight. Um, 
the main colour here is my colourway from the hearth, which is like a sort of rusty, ready colour, ready orange. And then my contrast colour one is the sort of golden yellowy colour that you can see. Let's see if I can get a different, here we go, you can see a little bit more of the sort of tones running through this section. So this is my colour caramelised. And then contrast colour two um, is the sort of black and white. This is Cruella. So it's like a speckled black and white, which for the triangle section, I held with some Surrey. Let's see if I can, there we go, you can see the fluff, which I think is really nice, just gives like a little extra pop to the triangle section. So I held that double with um, my Casper um, Silky Surrey, which is like um, a silvery um, natural bear skein. Um, and then my contrast colour three is this lovely deep green colour. Uh, which is my colourway Eat Your Greens. So that's all of those together. If I can elegantly pop it on. Here we go. I'll give you a bit of an idea of them all sort of together. I might see if I can pop some of the photos that I've taken on the screen as well. But yeah, really, really enjoyed that. It was a really nice project. Just what my brain needed at that time as well. So. So that was really good, really nice to have finished and with it being so gigantic, it's been really handy because the weather seems to have just suddenly dropped in temperature here over the last couple of weeks. So that's been really nice to just throw on with my coat just to do the school run and all those bits and pieces. Um, actually thinking about it, probably what I should have done first is what I'm wearing. Um, I have mentioned this on here before, but um, with difficulty sort of trying to show off bits of it because at the time I wasn't allowed to share the full garment. Um, but this is the Paloma cardigan um, that's a pattern by um, Francesca Hughes Knitwear for the Knit with Attitude 10 year anniversary book. And that book is now available to order like ready for dispatch rather than pre-order now. Um, so I'll see if I can stand up and just move you back a little bit. Here we go. Yeah, so we've got like a cropped cardigan you can see that it starts down here with um sort of like cabled ribbing and then you work up um before the armhole separation and then you do the um each side and the back and then you pick up a knit sleeves and then you pick up for the collar the buttonhole band and the button band um as you can see it's lots of lace work and cabling um, the pattern itself calls for a full sort of bracelet length sleeve, um, but I just know that if I do that I spend the whole time sort of pulling my sleeves up, so I decided just to shorten those to above the elbow and then I shortened the rib section to uh, the ribbing section to go with that as well. Um, I knitted this again out of my 100% British BFL fingering weight base. Um, this is the colourway Secret Garden, which as you can see is a really deep tonal sort of foresty green with some sections that are sort of more vibrant down to sort of almost black. And I've got some vintage buttons on there, just a sort of dark brown colour. The only thing with this that's bugging me a little bit is just that the collar line, my first button starts obviously a little bit of the way down. So this bit just wants to sort of pop open all the time and I did try and put a pin through it um, before recording, but it just wants to pull open. I don't know whether it's just unnecessarily bugging me or not, but I might try and See if I can find a way of sorting that out. I don't think I could squeeze another button in. I think it would throw this off a little bit as well. But but yes, otherwise, um, really, really nice pattern. It is one that um, I found, at least at the beginning, I really needed to spend some time concentrating on. So not really one for um, sort of mindless TV netting, at least to begin with. Um, although it does get that way a little bit once you get the sort of cable repeat down. Um, but yeah, it does definitely um, require a little bit more concentration to get going, but I think it'll be a really nice sort of throw on for dresses and just tops with jeans and things like that. So really pleased to have that done and to be able to share it with you now. Um, I will um, try and pop on screen as well a couple of photos that I took of it. Hopefully we'll give you a little bit of a better idea. So I'd mentioned last time as well that I was waiting for a test knit to come through as so I wasn't quite sure what I was going to cast on next and the test knit did come through. I was really excited about this one. I knew I wanted to apply to test it as soon as I saw the first sort of teaser image go up on Instagram. This is my finished test knit. So as you can see, it's a lace yoked um, sweater. 
This is the Yearn um, sweater by Yura. Um, she's more commonly known as Knit Boop um, over on social media, but I will pop all the details on the screen and down below. Um, so this is a really pretty lacework yoke. Hopefully that's picking up okay. And then um, sort of stockinette body and then go into these um, sort of slightly poofy sleeves. I did vary the pattern by doing a shorter length sleeve. Um, the sleeve wasn't particularly long. It was sort of I came to around here, I think. Um, but mine sits like around about the elbow with like much more of the, a um, sort of poof above it. So as you can see, I've not, um, you know, I've still got my ends to weave in once I've blocked it out, which I'm hoping to do um, today or tomorrow. I just knew I had a few things coming up, so I thought I'd bunch them and do them together. Um, but yes, this was a really lovely pattern to knit. Really, really clear. Um, as ever with Euro's patterns, they were um, size inclusive really clear and really easy to follow through. Um, so yeah, I knitted this in my Silky Alpaca Linen Blend yarn. Um, I just thought the lace work and that felt like it might be nice to have something a little bit sort of luxurious. So I went with that. I'm so pleased that I did because you get this really gentle sort of fluffy layer. Let's see if I can get it to, yeah, you can sort of just about see it on the top. God, it's really hard to show. It's just a very subtle sort of layer of fluff on there. Um, but otherwise with the silk you get this just really beautiful drape, really like soft and sheeny. When I say soft it is ridiculously soft, like there's no way that this wouldn't be comfortable against the skin. It barely feels like you're wearing anything when you've got it on because it's just such a soft drapey layer. So I'm really excited to see this all blocked out um, and get some photographs of it on. I think it'll be really lovely for I guess like sort of dressing up um, and popping on over a dress or you know with some like jeans to go out but I also think it'll be really nice as a um, like a transitional piece when it comes to the spring so yeah I don't know whether I mentioned the colourway name but this is Benevolent Badger if I didn't which is usually like a black inky dark blue but on the Silky Alpaca Linen because of the plant content it takes all of the colourways quite differently so on this base, it came up as much more of a, almost like metallic silvery gray. So yes, that was that one. And then had a little bit of a gap before Advent season was due to start. And I knew I wanted to work up my um, Advent colorways as I went through because of course I packaged myself up an entire calendar. So I also wanted to be able to um, open that and go through it through the month of December. So um, yes, yeah, so I actually committed to getting done my um this top which i know i mentioned previously because it's been hanging around on my needle since i think it was march i cast it on and then we went into lockdown the weather warmed up i just thought well i'll just put it to one side for now um but i actually really enjoyed at the time i would think was just really busy and exactly what i needed was working on sleeves i usually absolutely detest sleeve island but this time it actually felt like exactly exactly what i needed to be doing so that was quite nice this is my finished anchor sweater. So this is um, a pattern by Petite Knit. Um, it is a top down sweater. And this lovely um, sort of like stretchy rib yoked section, yoke section, sorry. And yeah, top down and then you pick up and knit the sleeves. So it was literally, I think I'd got like the one sleeve just sort of at this point. So I had to do both of the sleeves. That was all I had left. Um, but yeah, I knitted this in the largest child size, which I think from memory was about an age seven to eight. And this yarn is Garn, Garn Studio Drops. I've forgotten which blend it is. I'll pop it on the screen. And it was in like a colorway that was something like dark blue. To me, um, once it's knitted up, it reads much more of like a gray, heathery type blue. It's a really nice color actually. It's picking up quite true to color on camera. so. That's really nice. I think, again, I've got, this is one of the ones that I've got to sort of block out and weave all the ends on. Um, but I just thought it'd be really nice to get it done and then it can be one of my son's Christmas presents under the Christmas tree um, as his hand make this year. Um, if you are particularly sensitive, this yarn is a little bit more rustic. Um, I don't know whether it will pick up that there is some sort of sticky up fluffy bits, not overly, but there is. There's just, there's a little bit of texture to it. Um, personally, I think it would be fine for me, and I do tend to be quite sensitive um, with like itching with certain yarns. 
um, but I think probably without a t-shirt underneath, um, if you're particularly sensitive, it might be a little bit on the itchy side, but obviously this is intended as a second layer, so that will be fine for my son, hopefully. <laughs> hopefully he'll wear it, will keep your fingers crossed. Um, and then, yeah, so I've got a couple of other little things to show, but I think just before I go through those, I'll show you some of the other bits and pieces that I have been um, sort of working on die-wise over the last couple of weeks. So I'm taking part in the next Yorkshire Yarn Festival, which if you don't know, um, is currently being run monthly as a virtual yarn festival over on Instagram. Um, I'll pop the details of it down below, but essentially um, the exhibitors go live on the Yorkshire Yarn Fest page for 15 minutes each just to share anything really, bits about what they've been up to. Um, usually there is a theme for each event and quite a lot of the dyers that take part take part in that sort of themed yarn. Um, and yeah, they've been really good. This will be my third time taking part in December. But because the show for this month is on the 19th, which is obviously cutting it really close for Christmas and for anybody that might want um, things shipped for Christmas, we, um, just well, Sophie who runs it said about releasing the Christmas colourway um, early. So, sorry, it was a really convoluted way of going about that. But essentially the theme for this month was the Frank Sinatra song, Mistletoe and Holly. Um, and that was released on the 8th of December um, instead of waiting until the 19th. So I decided that I was going to take part. So I've got just a couple of skeins of that colourway to show you. So this was my mistletoe and holly uh, show theme yarn. Um, so as you can see, it's a variegated skein of sort of charcoal grey and greens and red. Lots of speckles. Um, these two particular skeins are my 100% merino fingering. Um, I did also have it available. I think I've got one skein left on BFL and I've sold out on the BFL high twist. But yeah, this was a really fun one. I just thought it was really, really nice and Christmassy. And um, I have got a little swatch that I did here on the high twist. Um, the high twist took it um, more saturated, but I think like less less of the speckles, more of like a transitional. You can see a little swatch of that knitted up there. Just nice little pops of red coming through. So yes, that was a really good one. And then when I was doing it, I just thought it was a really nice compliment. I might do a sort of deep, ready berry color. So this was another one that I did for the day. This is a new colorway to the shop, which is Berry Go Round, which if I get those back, oh. Hopefully we can see, we blow it out. Yeah, blow it out quite a bit, but hopefully that gives you a little bit of an idea. So that those two would be really nice, but I also think really looking forward to seeing this one. I think this will just be generally stocked in the shop now. I think it'd be really lovely in anything really, but how lovely would it be as a sweater or something? I don't know that, I've always thought like red's not the best color on me, but maybe this deep, I might give it a go. But yeah, so that was Berry Go Round. And then I also decided to bring forward a couple of other, um, well, three new, other new colourways that I was planning to launch by the end of this year. So one of them is one that was day two in my advent calendar. And I just really liked it once I tried it. So I decided to give it a go full size. It has come out a little bit more, I'd say, purpley um, full size, but this is what it looks like. And this is my colourway full bodied. I'd gone for the same name as I did in the advent, which is the absolute deepest, darkest plums. Um, and particularly on the merino, it's sort of drawn more of the colour through it. So you get more sort of vibrant sections. And then there's also sort of like reddish brown tones running through there as well. So that's full bodied. I'm really, really looking forward to seeing this one knit up. I've got the um, full bodied colourway as it appeared in the advent calendar knitted up at the moment and I just, just really love it. It's one of those ones I think that's like really different but not so different that when you put it on it's really obvious that it's like a standout colourway that people be like, oh you're wearing that again. I don't know if that makes any sense but yeah, really happy with that one so I think 
that's going to be a really nice one. So that was full bodied. And then another new colorway um, is this one, which is only a ginger. As you can see, is a skein of sort of, there are some sections of like a deep, ready chestnut colour down through all the tones of sort of auburn and ginger down to sort of like blondes and barely bears. Um, so yeah, I'm really excited about this one. Um, yeah, this is the last skein, everything else is sold out. So I think I'll be dying some more up properly, probably for the actual show date. And yeah, I'll definitely keep some back for myself this time. But yeah, I was really, really happy with how that turned out. It was one of those, let's give it a go and see what we can create sort of ones. And yeah, I'm so happy with that. And then the last one is a colourway that I did as a sort of looking forward to 2021 and all the positive and bright things to come. So I just went with something that sits, I guess it's a little bit generally outside, um, you know, what's sort of typically across my shop, although I have done things similar in the past. But this is the colourway Plucky Peacock. It is a highly variegated and highly speckled skein of purples and blues and greens and yeah, all that sort of stuff. Let's see if I can give you a little bit of a better look. So yeah, this is a just a really fun, bright and cheerful colourway. Um, I have this is on um merino which has actually taken it much less saturated you get much more of the bare yarn on the merino so um yeah the bfl is a much more vibrant version of this but yeah and i think i'm probably going to do for the um december show maybe a mini skein set to go with that so we will see hopefully i'll get time to put something together but yeah really excited about that as well so yeah if you're interested in any of those or you'd like to see some more pictures or anything like that you can see all of the um photos that i took of those yarns over on instagram where i am at yarnworthy yarn or otherwise over on the website which is yarnworthy.co.uk um so yeah so i think now i will show you where i have got to with my advent calendar patterns just checking i'm not in too much of a tangle so I decided to cast on um, a pattern called the Adventina shawl or wrap um, and I'll pop the details of the pattern again on the screen and down below. Um, I started going with this and I was so pleased at the beginning I was getting through my mini skein each day but then I had to drop it to do my little sample square with the mistletoe and holly and also a test knit which you can just see there that I will show you um, in a minute but I'm back on it now. We're on, today's obviously the 10th, so we're on day 10 and I've just hit ball number five. Yeah, so about five days behind, but we'll see. Hopefully, maybe I'll still stand a chance of getting it done by the end of the year, which would be lovely. Um, but this is what it looks like so far. So we have got day one right at the bottom here was my um, Colloy Two Flower. This is available on full size skeins in the shop. Um, day two was this colourway, which is the full bodied colourway, which is the one that I have um, attempted to sort of re dye off very vague instructions onto a full size skein. Um, and that's why I say I think it's come out a little bit more purpley, it's much more of a plum in here. And then day three is my colourway, and I bring us some figgy pudding, which is this um, sort of speckled plums and purples and browns. Um, this is available as part of my Christmas mini skein set and then day four is this colourway here. Let's see if I can get it to pick up what's going on. So it's like a self-striping, um, deep sort of vibrant red and a vibrant plum and then sort of like a transitional section between the two. And this is my colourway freshly picked. Ah, there we go, that's showing get a little bit better. And then just peeking in at the top, We've got the start of day five, which is um, just an advent colourway called Confetti, which is a speckled skein of predominantly um, like reds and golds. Okay, you can see a little bit of those peeking through on there. So yeah, I did um, hit day four, yeah, day four, um, which technically in the pattern is when it changes over to a lacework stripe. I really didn't like how it was working up in this colourway and I just thought actually I really like the garter stitch so I've decided to stick with that throughout um, but otherwise sort of stick into the format of the pattern and I'm really happy with how that's working up at the moment so like when it finishes it will end up being like that way. 
yeah that's um that's where i've got two on those and then i've got my um last four days i haven't opened today's as yet but i've got the next ones ready to go in here so we've moved into a little bit of yellows and greens and then onto the sort of silver one so yeah it's um i don't know one of those things like really moorish somehow walking working through a mini sketch and as soon as i start to see that the ball's shrinking and shrinking i have to get it finished and then do the like the initial stripe of the next color so Hopefully, I don't know, it would be nice to get it done by the end of this year, but we'll see. But I'm really happy with how that's um, working up anyway. And then, as I mentioned, I dropped that to pick up um, a test knit, um, which ended up being super speedy. Um, this, I mean, in fairness, it is sort of toddler sized, so <laughs> it's not a, um, a large garment by any means. Um, but um, I think just the, the yarn, how it ends up coming together... Um, means that it has worked up super super quickly well, let me show you so this is a test of the baby tulip sweater just a pattern by melody again i'll pop the details on the screen and down below and it is a top down raglan sweater um and then you get this lovely tulip scalloped edging this is the child's version of a pattern that already exists in adult sizing um and then you do the sleeves afterwards. Um, variations to the pattern it did call for a tubular cast on and I cast this on late at night and started it and then realised I can't be bothered to do the tubular cast on. It's too tired. I'm too tired. My brain's too tired. As you can see, I'm really wide awake today. So <laughs> I abandoned it and did the long tail cast on. So my top edge obviously could have, would have been neater if I had done a tubular cast on. I do really love the tubular cast on. I used it for my wool and honey sweater and I was so pleased with the effect that it gave. I think that was the first time that I did it. But yeah, I just went with long tail cast on um, and then worked this all down as per the pattern. Um, the scallop section, I um, I tend to knit my ribbing really quite tight, so I decided that for the bottom of the jumper itself, um, I stuck to the larger size of needle rather than dropping the needle size. Um, and yeah, it's still a little bit tight at the bottom, so obviously I've, again, not waving in the ends or blocked it yet, so hopefully I'll be able to sort of block that out a little bit just to get more of that sort of like tulip petal shape. Um, and then picking up and knitting for the sleeves. Yeah, the sleeve width was um, the same width the entire way down and I decided just to do some decreases. You can see there, just to tape that in a little bit because it was quite a wide sleeve. Um, I've popped all the details of the decre decreases I did over on my um, Ravelry page. Um, but if anybody's particularly interested and um, you, uh, I know there's accessibility issues with Ravelry, then please feel free to let me know. I'm more than happy to send those over to you. Um, and then again, sort of the ribbing was as standard. I did drop the needle size to do that, but went up to do my cast off because again, I'm just a tight knitter. So you usually have that problem with the ways you get to the end and I'm like, I'm done. And then I go to put it on and it's just, no, not happening. And then the only other variation I did for the baby size, you've got this um, little opening at the back um, for some snap buttons. Um, and I decided I don't have any snaps. I didn't really want to buy any just for this project. Um, and yeah, I wanted to be able to just get it done and get it sort of like photographed and on my daughter as soon as possible. So I did some buttonholes instead. I don't know whether you can see these particularly well, but there is a couple of little buttonholes there. Um, so I'm just going to pop some buttons on this side and then do it as a little buttonhole um plaque it instead so again i've got the details over on ravelry but once again if you would like those otherwise then please do let me know um so yeah so that's the that's what the little finished sweater looks like um so, so the yarn so it's what was really interesting with this pattern um i went for two strands of my um bfl fingering um, I went with that because it felt like it would need a little bit more bite than the merino and because of the scalloping and that I thought it would be better with something that held its shape a little bit better and the merino tends to be a little bit more drapey. So I held double the BFL together with one strand of my Silky Suri, um, which is a silk and baby Suri alpaca blend and um, yeah, it's got the, uh, the colours that I went for are glow. I'll try and show you on the screen because I've forgotten to bring the 
the actual skeins in with me but a glow is this sort of like um sort of like orangey goldy color and then the silky siri i went with red red wine which on that particular base pulls through was almost actually it's not dissimilar really in color to this it's like um a deep ready magenta color so the two together have given this like sort of really warm fiery effect you get like the transitional oranges but this like sort of pink overlay and all of this lovely fluff i'm really happy with it how that's worked up together um and yeah because of that it was obviously ended up as being like quite a thick i guess sort of around worsted weight um yarn so this just worked up so quick i think i cast on really late the one evening and literally just got up to here and then the next day I'd finished the entire body and started the sleeve and then I just finished both of the sleeves and that was literally just picking it up for a couple of hours in the evening. So I highly recommend it, it'd be really good as a gift knit um, because it is super speedy and also the most dense, coziest, softest fabric that you end up with at the end of it. But again, I will get all of these blocked out and ends woven in and then hopefully next time I will have some pictures to be able to share um what it looks like on um to an extent um i don't like sort of choose not to show my daughter's face or anything but um you can hopefully see it amongst her person somehow or another anyway um but yeah i think that was yeah that's definitely everything that i have been knitting over the last six to eight weeks or however long it's been hopefully next time i record it will be nowhere near as long a break as last time that was definitely very unintentional so yeah I don't know what my plans are going to be I think predominantly just getting through the um the advent shawl at the moment getting the other things blocked and some photos and that taken and then see where I end up see what I've got time to be able to to get on I would really like to do another jumper for myself I'd also really like to do something for my husband because I haven't made him anything in quite a long time now so we'll see, maybe I'll do something on that side, but yeah, look forward to catching up again and see where we end up. Hopefully I may also have had a chance to do some sewing. I don't know, let's not commit to anything, but yeah, it would be nice if I can get some of that done too. So I hope you are all keeping well. Um, please do feel free to leave me a comment down below or over on Instagram, or you can pop me um, an email or a message over the email is um, info at yarnworthy.co.uk um, again you can find me on instagram as at yarnworthy yarn and you can find my hand dyed yarn over on yarnworthy.co.uk um, i will be taking part on the 19th of december in the yorkshire yarn fest if you are interested i don't have uh, my time slot yet but i'll post all of the details um, over on instagram when i do um, but yes if you enjoyed hanging around with me today then thank you very much it would be really nice if you could give me a like or subscribe to this channel or hit the notification bell all of those really help to support me over here um, and it's very much appreciated but yes otherwise i hope you are keeping well hope you are enjoying whatever you are making at the moment and yeah i hope to see you very soon if i don't see you before have a lovely christmas or however you are celebrating the festive period i hope that you get to have a nice break and do whatever it is that you enjoy doing or that is giving you enjoyment and comfort at the moment and i will see you again soon bye <laughs>